public diffusion is cooking. Hello, my friends, and how are you doing? Today, I want to talk about the public diffusion model, and this will fill the need for models that don't have any kind of complex licensing or companies behind them. This is a model from the community for the community, trained mostly on public domain images or Creative Commons images that don't need attribution, which is, of course, also important for the usage and rights of the images afterwards. But before we get started with that, I want to talk a little bit about open source versus closed source. And first of all, let's kick that versus out of the room because open source and closed source are actually codependent. They complete each other, but they also have different uses why they exist. Let's talk about my story for a second. So I started out doing designs for companies and I really hated that because I have to work with individual clients. They pay me for what I do. My work is reliant on their payment, all that kind of tight connection between money and art. I hated that. So the model to be on YouTube is basically open source because I put my knowledge out there. Nobody has to pay for that, but you can support me if you want to and once in a while I have a sponsor to also keep me going and of course my amazing Patreon supporters. So like that 99% of the people have never to pay anything for the content and knowledge I provide them to understand all of that AI stuff a little bit easier. Now let's talk about open source and closed source. How is that different? Well, first of all, open source is amazing because, of course, it allows innovation for anyone who wants to take part in that. It shows everything that is going on and you can take part in all of these projects. And of course, that is amazing because it allows complete freedom and allows complete individuality in whatever you want to do with that. However, with that also comes often a steep learning curve where things are pretty complex and also the projects are often kind of unreliant because the group might lose interest in that and when the programmer is gone from that project the project might just die or run out and not happen anymore and you might not find anyone working on that in the future and of course both the learning curve the complexity to make it run on your computer and the inconsistency of will this project be around in a year or not is often not that good for either consumers or businesses who want to use software like that. Because, of course, on the one side, consumers want to have easy access and a tool that runs consistently and gives them the results they need without any kind of learning curve. So they rather would pay for a software to install on their computer and know this will work and know that they have a guarantee from the company that this will be a good product. But also the same is true for businesses. First of all, the businesses have to provide for their customers. They cannot just say, hey, sorry, doesn't work today. I'm not going to do anything today. They have to provide what the customers are paying for. So they have to rely on the software to work as good as possible. But also, on the other hand, they can't just install any kind of script where they don't know the source, they don't know the intent behind that and like that have a risk for that company. This is just not happening for a lot of companies out there. But of course, also, there's a third reason behind closed source projects, and that is long time investment, because a lot of these things cost not just millions, they cost billions to produce and that money has to come from somewhere. So they say if we invest 200, 300, 400 million dollars into a project, we have to have a certain guarantee that we get that money back. and. The way to do that is to have it closed source so that you can afterwards sell it licenses to different customers and have an income from that because otherwise you wouldn't have any investors investing in you if they don't know if they will ever get their money back. But the other thing here is often open source relies on closed source. For example, if you think about the open source community we have right now for AI, which has done amazing research, amazing projects, really created most of the innovation that is happening in the AI space, but 
Most of that was triggered by the big companies out there investing hundreds of millions of dollars to train very sophisticated models to enable the open source community to build all these tools around these models and fine tune the models. So you can see that there's a certain synergy, but at a certain point also you can break away because the technology is ripe enough that, for example, in this case with public diffusion, the community can say, hey, now that we know how it works and the tools are here, we're just going to train our own model. And that is amazing because then then we have the best of both worlds and everybody can fit in the place they are looking for. And that is what basically freedom is about, that you have the choice to either go that way or this way or use both ways at the same time. Now let's look at public diffusion. So here we have some example images. On the left side, you can see public diffusion. On the right side, you can see the flux model in comparison with the same prompt. And what you can see from these images is of course that the flux model, because it is much larger than the public diffusion model, also has nicer, finer details, but also the public diffusion model has this kind of raw, nice analog and kind of organic feel to it, which I really enjoy about that model. By the way, talking about size, so far the public diffusion model has a size of 7.4 gigabytes. So it is smaller than the flux model, but this might also come with a little bit less of quality, which of course is expected because flux has taken a lot of time to get that to that kind of quality. Here we have another example image. Again, public diffusion on the left, flux on the right side. And what you can see here is also that you have a feel that the public diffusion model is trained on public domain images, which often, of course, are older images from the black and white area, photos of classic paintings, sketches, things like that. So it has a lot more of this oil painting feel in here rather than the flux model. But you can also see that in the details, for example, with that boat, that the understanding right now is still a little bit limited on how good that boat can look, how much details you have for that boat. We have another example. And again, you can really see that kind of influence of oil painting. However, of course, this can improve over time when they get more access to to digital paintings, to artists' works that are more contemporary, that you get more of a modern style into that model. And of course, also we right now only have these few examples and not a deep dive into what the model actually can do. And this already is the last example I can show you for today. And again, it looks really cool. I like that raw and artistic look of the public diffusion model that feels a lot more handmade and organic. The flux image is really beautiful, but it also looks pretty modern in the technique and a little bit cool and digital from the artistic expression. But both of them of course are pretty beautiful. Now let's have a look at Jordan Meyer's x.com account where he's talking about the model and the release. They can say here they are 30% into the training. So there is still a long way to go to make this a good model. He also says that the model is not trained on specific styles. In this case, for example, anime images are not used for the training. He says that is by design because they want to create a foundation model and then allow studios to train with their own data to refine that. Also, they will allow for people to train their own styles and then put it under the subscription on their website to support the creators of these models and by that maximize control and compensation for the artists who train these models, which is an interesting approach because it takes time, experience and resources to create style loras or fine tune a model. So the compensation for that will enable better creators of models to fine tune them and give them to the community. At this point, I don't really know if they also have free models if you just want to donate your model to that cause rather than getting anything back for it. 
Early next week, they are going to open up for beta testing at the start only for a small group of beta testers. But of course, that's going to be opening up over time so more people can test the model before the release. He also points out that this is a 2B Lumina Next model, which is trained on 30 million images data set. And because of that, it has that size right now of 7.4 gigabytes. Let's also check out the Source Plus website. Here you can have more information about the model, but you can also find the collection of the images that are either public domain or creative commons with a license that doesn't require attribution so that you can download images here for your own training. They also have a system for how to keywording these images so that you can basically enrich them as they call it. So when I click on an individual image on that website, you can see all of the information here, what it is as a description, what the source is, what the license is, what the dimension is on so on. And then you have here the enrichment rich fields which has a caption in here and gives you some more information like text and the medium in this case digital photography so that you can use it perfectly for your training. It's interesting also that in here you can find this image which looks very similar to the output we have seen before from that training output. They also do have a pricing here for these models, even if they are public domain or creative commons. The reasoning behind that is, of course, that the hosting and creating all of that service, all of that information for you is again taking time and resources. So for that, you can sign up for free and you can also download as many images as you want for free. You have full access to that, but you have to download then one image at a time while when you have a subscription here you can download up to 10,000 images per month with the subscription so that probably makes it a little bit more useful for training data on the other hand you on the other hand you can rest assured that you have curated images that are certainly public domain or creative commons so that you can use them for your data training without any problems. And of course, that is a hard thing to achieve if you try to find the images on your own online because there might always be some kind of licensed or copyrighted images in there without you even knowing. Below on their website, they also have little videos that show you how everything works. Here you have the generation of captions for your image. And then also, of course, that you can edit these captions if you want to. So they are better for your training. And before you go at the end of this video, I have the clip that we created together in my last live stream as a little AI short film. Enjoy. Good evening, citizen. Large pepperoni pizza with mushrooms delivered in record time. That will be 1850. You're brave to come here. Thunderstorm. Brave? Not hungry? Do you really want to go through the creepy old guy in the shadows routine first? I am the pizza sneaker, my friend. I don't pay. Not even tips. What? What do you mean no payment? I no tip either. I'm gonna sneak that pizza sneaker a new one. Wait, I will send that up. I love a good pizza in the morning, but something smells like burnt pizza. Let's rock. <laughs> <laughs> 